Hey everyone, so Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger think that bonds are a waste of time. So I never bothered to take a real look into bonds, but with the yields rising from practically 0% to now close to 4%, well, bonds might appeal to some people out there. Now, there's actually some nicknames for what they call treasuries or bonds. We've got T-bills, which are like short-term, like less than two years. Then you've got the T-notes, which are like two to 10-year bonds. And then you have T-bonds, which are like 30-year bonds. These are all pretty simple. None of these are just with inflation, but they're the nicknames. And then you have what they call TIPS, T-I-P-S. And the face value of these actually increases with CPI and so does the coupon that you get, but generally they offer lower rates. So just to understand what a bond actually is, there's essentially you're giving, you're lending money, or well, a treasury bond is you're lending money to the government, and in return, they give you certain amount of cash flow back plus your initial investment when the time comes. So if it's a two year bond or a 10 year bond or a 30 year bond and you put in $100, you get your $100 back. But along the way per year, you get what they call the coupon, which is some cash flow coming in. Look, this is generally considered um, a very safe investment. I'll explain a little bit in a moment why, uh, but that's essentially how bonds work. Don't get too wrapped. Essentially you're lending money. You're acting like a bank would lend you money for a house or something like that. You're giving them the government money or in corporate bonds, you're giving the corporation money and they're paying you back some interest. Now I've just named a few of those bonds, but there's actually lots of different types of bonds out there, but look, I'm not gonna go into those. I'm just gonna focus on the most common bond, which is the US Treasury 10 year bond. So like that name suggests, the bond is issued by the US Treasury, which is like the US government and it will expire in 10 years time. This is the bond that all the economists on the news and things like that talk about when they're talking about you know, bond rates. They're talking about this one. So the US government is considered a risk, is considered risk free because the government can always and have always paid their debts. And if they just borrow too much, well, they're in control of the money printer. So they will just pay these debts by printing more money it's considered the risk-free rate. And the US government have a reputation now in the world stage that they pay their debts. So, you know, Russia is gonna default on their bonds. So, you know, it's gonna take generations for people to trust the Russian government again to start lending them money. Uh, so that's gonna be a big problem for Russia. Venezuela has gone through these issues. A lot of countries have gone through these issues before where they've defaulted on their bonds. So the bond payers lost their money. And that's really gonna hurt them for generations because the trust has been broken. The US, look, if, if that trust gets broken at some point, the world is going to be significantly different in the future. Uh, this is considered the risk-free rate. It's never happened before. Uh, they have the money printer, so it shouldn't happen in the future. It's not, for, the, for, them, for everyone to say it's risk-free, it, it doesn't really make sense to me because nothing is obviously risk-free because you know, who knows what scenarios could happen for the US government to default on their bond payments, but it's never happened. Um, everyone calls it the risk-free rate. I would say it's a 99.9999999% chance of it being safe. So um, we call it the risk-free rate for that. Anyway, so just as a regular person like you and I, you can lend the money, you can lend money to the government. Just like I said before, just like a, ban a bank lends money to you for a mortgage. Now in return, the government pays twice a year some interest. And at the end of those 10 years, you definitely get your money back. So if I lend the government $100, you might, they might pay me 4% per year for 10 years, which is $4 a year. Then I, at the end of the 10 years, I get my $100 back. Now this is how the government raises money and they use investors in just like they would use a bank. Now, if you are looking to trade bonds, you can in Interactive Brokers. This is the broker of my choice. Uh, it's a public company, so I can see it has a solid balance sheet and has a long track record, uh, not like Robinhood, which is essentially a startup. The link's in the description and you can take a demo account for a spin. Um, other interesting things in my description as well that you might be interested in. So look, take a look. Now, if you have all the intentions to just keep your 10 year US Treasury bond for the full 10 years, you would get 4% return on your money per year. Now that's not bad, I guess, but if inflation is 4% per year for the next 10 years, you're effectively making zero money and that kind of sucks. So maybe 7% would be a more attractive return, I guess, but inflation would still eat more than half of it if it sits at 4%. Now you might be thinking that a risk-free 7% is pretty impressive, and in, but it'll probably never get that high. 
Well, maybe not. But in the early 80s, so that's like 40 years ago, as you can see here on this chart, bond yields went as high as 15%. That's crazy. So at the time, you could have locked in 15% returns for 10 years. You actually could have locked in 15% returns for 30 years as well. So that's 30 years of 15% per annum returns risk-free. That's insane. That would have put you in the top probably 1% of the 1% of investors in the world. But anyway, why didn't everyone do that? Well, inflation at the time was pushing, say, 10% per annum. So it didn't feel like that good of a deal. The US economy was not looking like, well, like it was going to be able to keep its promise. And maybe it wasn't going to be able to pay back everyone. And it was actually not as risk-free as you might think. Sure, looking back in time, we see that is an amazing opportunity at 15% uh, bond rates because inflation returned to more normal levels. So for a lucky few who thought everything was gonna be okay, they pocketed this super high return for many years with their bonds. So being aware of bonds in a crazy volatile market is actually a good thing to do. Just keep an eye on it. Like anything, if you have this long-term horizon you can and you can see through the noise, you can probably benefit greatly when the opportunity comes up. But the main risk is whether the US is going to pay its debt or inflation is going to get out of control. And to me, that's pretty unlikely, maybe not 100% guaranteed, but as close to 100% guaranteed as we're going to get. So it's only 4% right now, but maybe like 12% or something like that, if things get really weird. It's good to have an understanding of what a bond is and what a good deal is going to be. And just to iterate that point, Warren Buffett said this at an annual general meeting. At the time this newspaper came out in 1942, it was the government was appealing to the patriotism of everybody. As kids, we went to school and we bought saving stamps to put in. Well, they first called them U.S. war bonds, and then they called them U.S. defense bonds, and then they called them U.S. savings bonds. But they were called war bonds then. And you put up $18.75, and you got back $25 in 10 years. And that's when I learned that that $4 for three uh, in 10 years was 2.9% compounded. They had to put in small print that, and, and even an 11-year-old could understand that 2.9% compounded uh, for 10 years was not a good investment. But we all we all bought them. It was it was you know it was part of the war effort basically, uh, and the government knew, I mean, you knew that significant inflation was coming from what was taking place in finance in World War II. We actually were on a massive Keynesian type behavior, not because we elected to follow Keynes, but because war forced us to have this huge deficit in our finances, which took our debt up to 120% of GDP. and. It was the great Keynesian experiment of all time, and we backed into it, and it sent us on a wave of prosperity like we've never seen. So you get some accidental benefits sometimes. But the United States government then was urging every citizen to put their money into a fixed dollar investment at 2.9% compounded for 10 years. And, and uh, I think Treasury bonds have been unattractive ever since, <laughs> with the exception of the early 80s. That was something at, the, at that time. I mean, you, you really had a chance to, to buy, you had a chance to invest your money by buying zero coupon treasury bonds and in effect guarantee yourself that for 30 years you would get a, a compounded return, you know, of something like 14% for 30 years of your lifetime. So the, every now and then something really strange happens in markets and, and the trick is to not only be prepared, but to take action when it happens. So of course, that's great advice from Warren there. Long-term bonds are generally unattractive, but sometimes something really strange happens in markets and it's about being prepared and ready to take action. I wanted to really drill down to when bonds were at like above 13% back in 1982. The hysteria around the market was that inflation was out of control and that the Fed couldn't do anything to stop hyperinflation. It would have taken some serious balls of steel to lock up money at say 13% or higher without caring about the fact that inflation might not be able to be controlled. Because of course, if you could guarantee say 15% risk-free, that seems crazy not to take it. But the media and the noise easily would have scared most people into, into not taking this action. 
It just must have been this really crazy time in the world. So obviously it's easy to sit here in 40 years later to look back in hindsight and say, oh, what an amazing deal that was. So you've got to understand your investing horizon. You've got to understand what you're actually investing in because when things get really crazy, it's going to test your beliefs and test your understanding of this craziness. So I guess having that emotional control and uh, deep understanding, well, that is the skill here. So if we did get above, say, 10% again, there will be a crazy amount of fear of inflation uncertainty. I think I personally would not be ready to make that bet at the moment, but I'm working on my knowledge base so that I might be able to do it if the offer was on the table. We're not there yet anyway, so I've got some time to upskill myself here. So now in the next episode that I make, I'll go through a bond trade that you might actually find quite interesting that we could maybe look at right now. Plus you can get a little bit more familiar with bonds so that when the time comes, if the time comes, you won't miss out on one of the potentially safest profitable investment opportunities that there's been for decades. So I appreciate you staying to the end. Let me know what you think about bonds and I will see you in that next episode.